be, and, and here, by the way, is the Kalman. This is just an early mock-up of the UI, but you've got the seven parameters here. Um, the button to measure peak luminance, so that you can put that into here. Um, wh whenever you, because the result of putting in these seven parameters will be a completely different set of tone curves. Whenever you upload that to the TV, Kalman will generate a new set of tone curve targets. And this is just some examples here with you know 1,000, 2,000. And you import these into Kalman, and then on the next page we have an example reading. So this is a tone curve for a 4,000 nit um, uh, metadata. And so we have the roll off here that, with a clipping point around the 4,000 nit point. And now the delta E's represent what you ask the TV to do rather than represent what PQ is. You can always go back to PQ. I'll, I'll just do that to show what the uh, standard method looks like. And one thing I wanted to summarize that I believe I understood from yeah. what you said, because it'll do look at metadata, it'll look at HDR10, it'll look, yeah. like, it'll look at uh, HLG or whatever, yeah. and if it doesn't see max cell or whatever, it'll assume it's 4,000 nit right. and all of that. This, even though you didn't use the brands, this will work with HDR10, yeah, Dolby, Dolby Vision, Vision. Yes. HLG. So Dolby Vision is slightly separate from this. Dolby Vision ha works on the basis of a configuration file. Uh -huh. The configuration right. file for Dolby Vision contains that peak luminance right. and color gamut. It'll look at that. And, and Dolby yeah. Vision will look at that, yeah. That's great. Yeah. And you'll be looking at that. Yes. Yeah, that's great. So uh, this is what would have happened and in the And HLG past. as well. HLG as well, yeah. Maybe Although technical a, HLG there. is relative, so you uh -huh. don't need to put the peak luminance back in because it's like gamma. It's an analog, yeah. it's an analog circuit, yeah. Okay. Um, so now we have delta E errors shown from the deviation from PQ, mm -hmm. and if I had chosen a roll-off point that started lower mm -hmm. down, which may look mm -hmm. better, you'd end up with delta E errors across nice the board, yep. but, but that would be unfair because what we what you should be doing is checking what did you ask the TV to do, mm -hmm. and now is it doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. So those are the two things that uh, we're Very introducing good. here. I think the, uh, they're mainly aimed at enthusiasts. Um, mm -hmm. Calibrators tend to have a test pattern generator anyway, but uh, the barriers... But enthusiasts can set contrast. Yes, they Peak can. and minimum luminance. Yes. Beautifully and perfectly. Yes. That's a, and that's the most important element yes. to set. And a consumer can do it with his eye, with no equipment. Yes. Right with your test that's patterns true. that are so brilliant in yes. there. And you can do even half percent, one percent. Yes, yes. You know, so you can do it better than ever before professionally. Yes. At home. Yes. With no equipment. And Easily. even if you wanted to buy the equipment. Yeah. That's the a original, really big deal. The original yeah. cost was about three thousand yes. dollars for a meter, a pattern generator, yes. and software. And software. Now, and the know-how. And the know-how. <laughs> but now you're at six hundred dollars, yeah. and yeah. you may not have the know-how, but you've yeah. got you've got tools to help. And just you do it in the technicolor and mode, and you're in good shape. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, what can you share with us? Is there a new? I know that you're not LG Display, but can you share with us if this is a new panel for, for 2020 or whatever yeah, the year it, is? Yeah, it's not a new panel, but there are a couple of new panel features that are uh, uh -huh. made and enabled this year. Um, so if I go into the picture settings here... And later in the year when this comes out in the spring-summer, it will still be the carryover panel. Not exactly. There's a, a couple of new features. In Other term, than these features, it yeah. is still okay. In terms of peak luminance and color gamut, there isn't right. any significant okay. change. That's where uh, I was going. Having said that, yeah. over time, yeah. the panels seem to be getting brighter and brighter. Very I, nice. I think it's just because we are learning more how to, you know, what what little tweaks <laughs> to the production line result in a brighter panel. Oh, okay. Let's keep doing that then. Well, we've certainly noticed it in the yeah. in the CEs, right? And, and that series. So the first thing is uh, true motion. And if you go to user, this is the motion interpolation. But in, in the user section, you, as of last year, you had a, um, uh, a control for black frame insertion. Um, this year, the black frame insertion has been given three different levels. So you've got low, medium, and, and high. what is it changing? The intensity of the black I'm itself? Not, I need or to, the speed of how, when it I flashes? I need to find out because okay. <laughs> all the samples I have were C8. You know, when I'm doing my development yeah. for the calibration, sure. I had a C9 uh, processing board with a C8 panel. So okay. I haven't, this is my first time experiencing it. Okay. Too. Um, it was a good question. It's yes, a tough it question you're going to get. So, yeah, medium and low, so it does make a difference to the peak luminance. But we, it does, of course, as it should, and yeah. it will. And but I, it's but nice have, that, it's, that we have low, medium, high. Yes. That's a big upgrade in itself. Well, and also, the, the high was the previous on. Yeah. And this Very really good. is perhaps a little bit too dark. This is great. And, uh, right. Right. and, and perhaps too flickery. So I yeah. think 
Oh, that's great. So that's that's your result. Result. The high seems to affect the picture negatively. Right? Looking at it, almost seems like a. Yeah. You may not use it. Like a flutter. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's actually bothering But the low and the medium are much better. Yeah. But there may be some extreme cases where you want to use high and you'll sacrifice the lumens just for a little bit for some scene that you want to see. And I think it also depends on your viewing environment. I'll bet law enforcement, when the cops play back the video, they want to see every detail in every frame. Well, what I've noticed, and I actually first noticed this with 3D, is if you if you see flicker, if the rest of the world is not flickering, then it's distracting. Right. And so when we're watching this here, there's a huge big white thing behind and that's not flickering and this is. If you're in a dark room and you're, the only thing you can see is the screen uh, and black around it, then you won't even notice the flicker. It's not distracting anymore. Yeah. That's why 3D with active shutter glasses works for yeah. very large screens, but it doesn't work very well for a small screen because you've made the rest of the world flicker that wasn't before. Right, okay. Um, anyway, that's uh, the first feature that's new. The second one is, uh, let me just go back and just turn this off. Uh, the second one is the ability to change the amount of white boost in HDR mode. Uh, this is also available in SDR. Um, it's labeled as peak brightness. So the default in previous years was high in HDR and off in SDR. That's still the same default, but now we have a menu for it. We didn't ever have that before. So if I turn off this, the peak luminance drops, but the color accuracy increases slightly. Now, now the, it's a little known fact that the Alpha 9 actually has much better color accuracy than the Alpha 7 for, for OLED only because it has some OLED specific functionality that improves the color volume at the low end and pushes the color volume distortion up. This eliminates the color volume distortion altogether at the at the expense of peak luminance. Yeah, so, so that yeah. would also include the SM99 which has a Gen 9 it has but a it would not have the benefits. No, because, because it's, it's an LCD. Right. Yeah. But it also, because it's an LCD, it also doesn't have the color volume mm -hmm. distortion problems that an LCD has. That's right. Very good. So they have a larger color gamut. Yes. Coverage. So again, typically we put it on high, but the we, the reason we could never do this before is if you put it on off, your peak luminance drops, and the, you've got no way to update your tone curve to adjust. Now we can use Calman oh, and we nice. can put that peak luminance, the lower peak luminance in, and you're still tracking PQ. So uh, that's the, uh, those are the two new functions that are Beautiful. panel specific to answer your question. Yeah, very good. And uh, a while ago we spoke about how when it goes through its very Correct. final step of going from digital to creating a light yeah. source, that there was some little pickup of... Yeah, there was, last year there was can a you change. Say that I again? don't. I don't <laughs> You mean just repeat it? Or? Well, yes, because I didn't record it last year. Oh, okay. and I thought it was like one of the more important things. Yeah, it was. Is so, it okay? <laughs> yeah. So there's two important things. What, one is the, um, the, the TCOM that does the digital to analog conversion. It's a 10-bit input, 10-bit 2.2 gamma, just mm -hmm. like everyone else, mm -hmm. for 10-bit 2.2 uh, gamma input. And many times we've been asked, why is it either not higher than 10-bit, or why is it not PQ instead of 2.2 gamma? And one of the reasons is that when you convert from digital to analog, there's two bit precisions you need to know, not just the 10-bit in, you also need to know what is the bit precision of the output. And the native response of the material that's used in OLED is, is linear. And so you, you need to have a very high uh, bit precision on the output side because it's linear. And um, that is most often the limiting factor. LCD is not perfectly linear, but it has a similar situation where it's that output side of the TCOM that's really the, the bottom. And from 2017 to 2018, we increased the bit precision there, which would have resulted in uh, improvements in dark shadow detail. Um, over the which we've seen months, improvements in below five percent. Yes, we thought it was some improvement in, in, in image processing. In, in image act, processing, yeah, but it actually was that was a panel improvement. For yes, it is. So it's I not mean, exactly a hardware panel improvement, no. but it's a firmware within. Oh no, it and is a chip. hardware. It is a hardware. It's a chip as well. The chip, That's the chip right. Changed for the T that is fantastic. Thank yes. you. And is that exclusive to LG OLED? Uh, LG Display OLED, yes, WRGB OLED. Sadly, even though I work for LG Electronics, that's not exclusive to LG Electronics. That's so the other, the other vendors, get, vendors get that benefit as well, because they're using the same TCOM. Yes. Right, because that's supplied by LG Display yes. along with the module. That's right. Yeah. Um, 
the other thing which I believe is uh, exclusive to LG Electronics is we have a, a, a feature which we're not marketing because it's too complex, but I will tell it to you anyway, um, and that is uh, uh, a, a different way of sending the RGB data to the panel that gives us pixel level control over the white boost. And the way we're using that is we there is some level of distortion that happens because we're increasing white to increase the peak luminance. And we're able to adjust where that distortion occurs. In the past, 2017 models, the Alpha 7 models, um, they used a global uh, color saturation boost to compensate for a desaturation caused by adding white. Um, but that desaturation wasn't global, so using color boost is not really the right way to do it. And it, it, it's kind of somewhat uh, not obvious, because even if you look at competitor products, everyone has a color slider. And in the UI, it will still look like there's no color boost. But if you were to get down to the chip level, you'd see actually there is. Because if there wasn't, you'd see massive desaturation. And that's and, on the processing chip. Yeah, and that's done. That, Driven with firmware that, as well, yes. the software. And that global uh, saturation boost is done by, as far as I know, all manufacturers to compensate for the for desaturation. The, for the desaturation of the white OLED. Right. right. Whereas on. Um, because you get a full, you get a great color gamut yes, on an OLED. Do. Yeah. Yeah, on a WRGB yeah. OLED, I know. Whereas with. Uh, the Alpha 9 chips, yeah. we are able to shift that desaturation into the highlight region only, so that below around 300 nits, there is no desaturation. And if you look in Kalman, you'll see that. It's a little bit difficult to see because all of the other manufacturers, including LG with our previous models, we would have optimized that global saturation gain so that the color checker and the saturation sweeps all come out good. But if you start measuring other points in the color volume, you'll see that there is this distortion yeah. that is there. And it's um, massively improved with the Alpha 9, both last year and for the Gen 2. And I want to talk about that because I think that's a great benefit that we yes. have over our competitors. Thank you. I'm going to reach over and shake hands. You are the best. Thank, Thank you. you. How did you get an education like this? This would be my last question. <laughs> it's a, it's a, you're an amazing I, presenter and you're amazing I, with your skill and brains on this. I don't, I, you're awesome. I don't have a uh, degree. I don't have yeah. an undergraduate degree. Yeah. So everything I know is self-taught over yeah. the last so four or five years. Absolutely amazing. You must have been some crazy kid with great parents. Yeah, that's a good point. I should credit my parents. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank my parents, my wife. My... <laughs> thank you again, Neil. Thank you.